Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 songs that are never or rarely played live. My thoughts I have seen Rings of smoke through the trees For this list, we'll be looking at the tunes that musicians tend to avoid using in public performances. Were you lucky enough to hear any of these songs live? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, 1999, Prince. The title of this once forward-looking classic eventually became a little dated once we entered the new millennium. That certainly didn't go unnoticed by the legendary Purple One himself. So tonight I'm gonna party like it's night. Although we don't think anyone would have complained, Prince decided to retire it from live performances once the millennium began. He initially gave the song the send-off it deserved by playing it at a concert that aired on New Year's Eve in 2000. Luckily, retirements don't always stick in the music world. Prince brought the song back at the Super Bowl halftime show in 2007 and kept playing it afterward. Number 9, Just the Way You Are, Billy Joel. Few things have inspired more songs than love, but what happens when that love ends? Billy Joel originally wrote this beloved track for his wife as a birthday present. I could not leave you in times of trouble. However, when their marriage ended in 1982, the song lost some of its appeal for the singer. At least his drummer, Liberty DeVito, was able to find some humor in the situation by changing some of the lyrics to, She got the house, she got the car. I just want someone that I can talk to. I want you just the way you are. However, the iconic singer explained that after the divorce, he no longer enjoyed performing the song. He took an off-concert set list for over a decade. Fortunately, in the 2000s, the piano man finally brought the song out of retirement. Couldn't I love you any better? I love you just the way you are. Number 8. Shiny Happy People, R.E.M. No artist ever knows which songs will connect with audiences. Based on what we know about Shiny Happy People, R.E.M. may have been shocked when the song became an inescapable smash. Meet me in the crowd, people, people. Singer Michael Stipe claimed it was written for children, and bassist Mike Mills wasn't fond of it either. That's why it didn't take long for it to disappear from concert set lists. They didn't even include it on their 2003 compilation album. Shiny Happy People Over the years, the singer's stance on the song seems to have softened. In an interview, he explained that if it's important to the fans, he doesn't want to take that from them. Number 7. You Gotta Fight For Your Rights To Party Beastie Boys Career-defining anthems don't get much more iconic than this classic hip-hop track. The song turned the group into stars, helped their debut album sell millions of records, and is still beloved today. You wake up late for school, man. Unfortunately, it turns out the irony of the song was lost on many listeners. The group intended to make fun of frat boy antics with this track. However, it ended up turning them into the poster boys for the very thing they were taunting. You gotta fight for your right to party. Initially, they were okay with playing along, but they grew uncomfortable when they realized they might be promoting values and behavior they were against. You gotta fight! Their hang-ups over the song caused the Beastie Boys to largely stop performing it live and to only bring it out occasionally throughout their storied career. Party. Number 6. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. ACDC. It's no surprise that fans want to hear their favorite songs when they go to a concert. 
However, it's hard to believe anyone would fault the band for excluding this beloved track from their live shows. Riding on the highway, going to a show. The iconic song was written and sung by the band's original singer, Bon Scott. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1980 at the young age of 33. Although the band considered breaking up, they decided to keep going and enlisted Brian Johnson as their new singer. Johnson decided to honor Scott's memory by not including the song in their set lists. I tell you folks, it's harder than it looks. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. The band hasn't performed the track since 1979. Number 5. Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus. Although the song was initially written for Jesse J, it's hard to imagine anyone other than Miley Cyrus singing it. The song is a breezy anthem that almost demands to be sung along to. Although many people consider it her signature song, the singer wasn't all that fond of it. She mainly chose to include it on her EP, The Time of Our Lives, because she needed more songs. She never felt it adequately represented her as an artist. Over the years, Cyrus expressed ambivalence toward it and hinted that it's unlikely you'll see her belting out this tune. It's not even really about the video. It's like putting yourself in that energy. Part of the USA, it's like that's an act. That's me being an entertainer. She's definitely gone on to make a few more iconic songs that better suit her style since then. Yeah! <laughs> Number four, The Conjuring, Megadeth. Ever since he was a teenager, lead singer Dave Mustaine was intrigued by black magic, so it's not surprising that his band's music would occasionally dabble in that subject matter. My mom was a Jehovah's Witness. I was brought up as a witness and I revolted into the witchcraft because I hated going out and knocking on people's doors. However, the singer lost interest in singing about the occult, black magic, or witchcraft when he became a born-again Christian. He even went as far as to claim that black magic ruined his life. Mustaine's beliefs are the main reason why the band stopped playing this song in 2001. However, in 2016, the singer explained that he wouldn't mind doing the song again, because it is a good song. And in 2018, the band played it live for the first time in 17 years. Number 3. Big Me, Foo Fighters the Foo Fighters seem to genuinely enjoy making their music videos. Their love for the medium is perhaps most evident in the clip for the fourth single off their debut album. They chose to use Big Me to parody the Mentos commercials that were popular at the time. Unfortunately, this pushed fans to throw Mentos at the Foo Fighters during live performances of the song. The band understandably didn't enjoy having things thrown at them and ceased performing it altogether. But it's you, I fell into. However, hearing Weezer cover the song on a joint tour made the band want to perform it again. Big Me returned to their set lists not long after. Number 2. Creep, Radiohead Few bands burst onto the scene as successfully as Radiohead. Their debut single became a career-defining anthem that earned them millions of fans. At the same time, it marked a time where the group was still figuring out who they were. But I'm a creep. I'm a Since they didn't want to be defined by a song from the start of their career, they began to resent it. It certainly didn't help that some fans would request the song and leave immediately after hearing it. I want you to notice I'm not around. Eventually, the band became so tired of the song that they refused to play it and occasionally became hostile towards requests. But maybe absence made the heart grow fonder. In 2016, the band started performing the song at concerts again. Want more music content? 
Watch Mojo produces an original podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. The show provides authentic interviews with artists from all around the world, while also staying true to Watch Mojo's roots with top 10 music banter thrown into the mix. What's the best advice Alice Cooper's ever given you? Looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. If you want exclusive interviews with award-winning artists, producers, singers, songwriters, check out Inner Sleeve. Number one, Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. There's a lady who should All that glitters is gold And she's buying staring to hear This seminal rock band broke up in 1980 after the tragic death of drummer John Bonham. However, their legendary frontman Robert Plant never stopped making music. Over time, he's encountered countless requests to play what many consider one of the greatest songs of all time. Plan had expressed that he has no desire to play that song live. He explained that he'd break out in hives if that was a constant on his set lists. And a new day will go for those who stand long, and the forests will echo his laughter. However, the singer has no harsh feelings toward the song or his past band. Instead, he considers it part of a time in his life that he's closed the book on. And She's buying a stairway to heaven. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.